September 11, 2001 was one of the most horrible days in not only U.S., but world history. Because it was the day when Islamic terrorists hijacked planes and crashed them into the World Trade Centers, which not only destroyed them, but killed hundreds of people in the process. The survivors ended up creating a group called the World Trade Center Survivors Network, where in 2003, one of its founders would hear of a woman named Tanya Head. Tanya claimed to be a 9-11 survivor, where for the next four years, she would gain huge media attention where she told a story, which eventually led her to becoming the president of the Survivors Network. However, that all changed in September of 2007, when the New York Times sought her out for an interview where they were making a 9-11 anniversary piece for her. Many of the claims Tanya made were suspicious to them, so they investigated the claims, such as her graduating from Harvard and Stanford University, to the claim where she was working for Merrill Lynch in the South Tower when the attack happened, and losing her husband, who worked at the North Tower in the process. All of those claims were proven false. Yet the biggest bombshell would come from the Spanish newspaper La Vanguardia, when it was revealed that not only was Tanya not in New York when the 9-11 attack happened, but instead she was attending classes in Barcelona, where her real name was Alicia. After she was exposed as a fraud, she was removed as president of the Survivors Network and has been shunned almost from existence. In 2012, a book and documentary called the woman who wasn't there was made, detailing Head's story from her claims on up to her exposure. I was working in the World Trade Center in the 96th floor, and when, when you were up there, you really felt empowered, like you really had achieved something in life. I was flying through the air. That's, that's what I was doing from the impact. We had all been through horrible things, but Tanya's was just head and shoulders above anything else that any of us had gone through. I was smelling my own skin burning. She was telling her story. I mean, you can feel your heart ache. And I started crawling over people who were burnt from head to toe, who were cut up, and I was, I was trying to help them. Here's this person who went through so much that who in the world could possibly survive this? Yes, she's a survivor. Here she is, she's a survivor. It's our duty to, to remember those who are no longer here. It's a duty to, to do something with our survivor experience. This is Tanya. She's also a survivor and she's also one of my best friends. Even with everything that she went through, she was looking out for us. It was a couple of days before the sixth anniversary. Tanya came over to me. She was frantic. And she said that a New York Times reporter was going to do a story on her. When they said they're doing a piece on Tanya Head, I said, oh, that's very good. And I um, started to answer their questions, and about a quarter of the way in, I realized that this wasn't just a piece, this was an investigation. She was sitting outside, crying hysterically, saying, they're, they're asking all these questions, they're fact-checking, they're questioning my story. And I remember thinking to myself, what horrible people they are. I just could not believe what I was hearing. I was like, I actually, I think I went into shock. The person that we saw, that we believed in, never existed. How could you say that? How could you say that she's a fraud? It kind of shake your confidence in humanity. She's somebody who now to me is a total stranger. It's reopened some wounds from, from the attacks themselves. All those hours and days and months and years of sharing. I want to know who she is, I need to find that out. Jeez. 
When I hear this story, I sit here and I think, all this time, I thought Casey Anthony was a scum of the universe. I mean, this lady stood on the corpses of hundreds of people because she wanted to be the center of attention. And last I know, her last known whereabouts was she was in Barcelona where she runs a renovation company and keeps a very low profile because she is so shunned. But after hearing what she's done, can you really blame her?